Hello, everybody. How you doing? This is Brad, and this is The Bad Show. And it is time once again to discuss things that have been going on in the gaming world. Uh, for the past week. At least a little bit of them. Uh, and as always, we're going to try to start off with some Fortnite news. That And uh, this will be the announcement that Daredevil is coming to the game. Now, I think this was, um, we already knew this. This was something that people either already expected because there were certain heroes that were showing up in these Marvel uh, Fortnite crossover comics that are being done. And Dare, uh, Daredevil was one of them. So, I think it's not a surprise that this character is coming to the game. But, um, hold on just a sec. Thirsty. Um. So anyway, they uh they did a Daredevil Cup yesterday, where the top I think it was eight hundred players in um in a region. Um. If you make it in the top eight hundred, I think it was. That may not have been what exactly it was. Uh, you could get the skin early. And for everyone else. It will show up in the item shop, I think, either tonight or tomorrow. Tonight being Friday night and then Saturday. Because this is going to go up tomorrow. Uh, my time right now, tomorrow. Which would be Saturday uh, morning, or Saturday evening, I guess. But, uh... Anyway... So, for, uh, so we're getting Daredevil. Now, I don't know that much about Daredevil other than he's blind. So, this is another one of those characters I don't know all that much about. But, you know what? I like red. Red is my favorite color. So, cool looking character. I am curious as to, you know, it, the, what all he will get. I think I've seen, maybe seen a picture of like his glider. But I'm not sure. But, hey, it's something. And there's still supposed to be more characters coming, which is insane. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. But, uh... Yeah, like, oh, and I don't know if I've gotten to talk about this, uh... Since I did it, but I managed to... F I, did I talk about this last week, where I finished the Battle Pass? I may have, I may, I may have, I may not have talked about it. But yeah, I finished the Battle Pass, all except the extra styles... Uh, I only have now left to unlock the alternate style, alternate, uh, the extra style for Mystique and then the Logan skin for Wolverine. So, because I'm not too worried about the, the foil skins, those are just extra anyway. Like, I think I could get all the silver ones, but I'm probably not going to put in enough effort to get the gold ones and certainly not the rainbow foil ones. Like... It's cool for people who want to, you know, push themselves and maybe people who play Fortnite just, ex you know, exclusively. You know, that's fine. It's 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 nice that they do put in, you know, extra goals for people who want to play beyond level 100 and, you know, want to shoot for those long-term goals in the game. It's just me personally, I just want, you know, I want the base level skins. The foils are cool. But they don't interest me. Like, I unlocked Silver Groot, and I just looked at him, and I was like, ugh. Like, okay, he looks he looks like he put on the metal cap from Mario 64, okay. Not sure, it doesn't, you know, it's not all that appealing to me personally, but, oh well. But see, then, like, on the other hand, you've got, like, uh, the Silver Foil for Wolverine is modeled somewhat after, like, I think his X-Force uh, costume where he was like wearing gray and black so that's cool but like again you know the 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 metallic feature of it where it looks reflectant and all that it, it just it's not quite the same but again you know I'm, I'm not I'm not against these foils being in the game it's just uh, they're you know if I get them I get them if I don't I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna feel bad about it but anyway there's Daredevil I, I tried to get into the uh, 
into the, the cup yesterday. Not that I thought I was actually going to win, but uh, I got in or tried to get in. And for some reason, I was having a better ping on the West Coast instead of the East. So it had automatically, uh, automatically was set me to the West Coast. And when I changed it back to East, I had already missed out on the time. So the time frame for East Coast had already expired. Oh well. I don't know what happened there, but it was weird. Anyway, moving along now with something a little bit more mysterious. Uh, in that we got a new trailer for The Legend of Zelda. Well, not The Legend of Zelda, technically. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Where we get a look at a new villain. And we don't really know anything about this villain. Except they have very ominous looking eyes. So, uh, anyway, the, the trailer seems to have, like, I, I actually, sitting back here thinking about it, I didn't even watch the full trailer. I just read the discourse about it. Um, the trailer, from what I gather, was mostly, like, showcasing the Yiga clan. And how, you know, they, they are loyal servants of Ganon, and they will serve him, you know, they, they are... Just they're 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 Ganon's top, you know, basically his army. But anyway, uh, oh god, what's his name? What's the head of the Yigas? Uh, he was a boss in Breath of the Wild, Master Koga or something like that. Anyway, he's back. There's another, uh, I think it was a a bigger, like you know, like in Breath of the Wild, there's two different. Giga Clan guys that'll chase you, and one of them being like you know the fast one who will you know chase after you the uh the one who like shoots arrows at you. Um, of course they they like they have variants like some have like little little uh mini sickle that they'll chase you with as a blade. Some of them will shoot arrows at you or whatever. Anyway, this one looks like a one of the bigger guys that carries the big sword that, you know, s attacks you with like a whirlwind or like uh, some kind of ground attack. Anyway, it's a bigger guy. But the thing that everybody was focused on is this character that you, I hope you can see. It's a very dark shot because you're clearly not supposed to know who this is. Um, it's a new character. At least it looks like a new character. Uh, the thing of note, uh, the thing of notice is, and I don't have that particular picture up, is that this character is wearing the Gerudo symbol on their back. But looking at this, it does not appear to be a Gerudo. Because people have, like, from what I understand of it, like, the hair looks blonde. I don't know if that's just a lighting thing, but I saw other people describe it as blonde hair, so that's interesting. I don't think any of the Gerudo have any, like, non-reddish sort of, you know, um, hair. Like, even Ganondorf has, like, the red hair, so it's just a characteristic of their, uh, of their group. So it's interesting that this would this person wearing the Gerudo sign in allegiance with the Yiga is not a Gerudo, but they obviously must be somebody who, uh, somebody who is a worshiper of Ganon, because you know, because at this point, like I've said before, um, in Breath of the Wild, you know, Ganon is his own you know myth. At this, at this point. He's like a mythological being. So. Like I said. I'm, I'm curious as to like how the story is going to play out. Because. Breath of the Wild gave you the sense that you know. That they were preparing. 
for everything. Uh, they were getting ready for a potential Ganon resurrection. And then it happened out of the blue. So, my my guess in what happens is, I guess that this is going to, like, I don't really have any guesses who this character could be. Like, there are different, like, uh, I don't know, what, what would you call them? It's not a, not a puppet, but there are, oh, I don't, I haven't played these games enough to know, like, like the, the Game Boy games, I think, some of the older Game Boy games of Zelda, where Ganon had a, a servant that went by another name, but was actually like a being he created himself. I think to serve as like a, a means to fully resurrect himself or something like that, a, a vassal or something. I don't know. Like it, it's, I don't know if this is just going to be like somebody who is just, you know, insanely obsessed with Ganon and thinks Ganon, you know, like uh, basically like a cultist like the, uh, the Yiga are. So, but it's an interesting dynamic. You know, you think about the, the Yiga, you know, I think the I think the storyline ex, uh, explanation for the Yiga is that they are uh, Sheikah who have defected from the kingdom and have turned in in worship of Ganon. So that's an interesting you know thing. But if this person here is not officially, well, I guess they would technically be part of the Yiga if the Yiga are aligned to them, because the you can't see it here. But in the first shot of this character, there's two Yiga kneeling to this character. So I don't know if may maybe this is Ganon too. I mean, you can see the headdress there that looks like the malice eye on their head and then the Gerudo sign on their back, which if you remember the teaser for Breath of the Wild 2, the the corpse in the, the tomb, which is clearly supposed to be Ganondorf, is, you know, covered in Gerudo uh, symbols. So... And again, I've pointed this out before, twice in Breath of the Wild, they talked about uh, Ganon's, you know, connection to the Gerudo specifically. And if, so that's, that's interesting to me, you know, from a story perspective, because in like Ocarina of Time, you know, Ganondorf was their king. The, the Gerudo served Ganondorf, all except for... Noburu, I think what was that was that her name, the one who became uh, one of the uh, six sages. She uh, she rebelled against them all, and was punished for it. But uh, so I, I like at this point in Breath of the Wild, the Gerudo have you know there's an alliance between all the different races there the 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 Ruto, the the Zoras and the Gorons and the uh the Hylians or Hylians. God, I can't I keep mispronouncing that. Hylians. But anyway. And the royal family, of course. So because the uh Urbosa was, you know, like a guardian for Zelda. So they've clear like there's a clear like over time, if you if you consider the Zelda games to be like one timeline, or um, when there's three timelines, but you know what I mean, like it like they're all continuities of each other. Uh, the Gerudo seem to have, you know, realized that Ganon is not, you know, a being to follow. So that's that's interesting. Like like the story is interesting. So we saw like in in Breath of the Wild. Urbosa mentioned it after, you know, after you free her spirit in her sacred beast, she brings up the fact that, you know, the Gerudo are tied to Ganon's history. And she says that makes it personal for her as a Gerudo, you know, that she feels like she needs to step up on behalf of her people to, I guess, um, uh, defend what they are now. And how far they've come. Like, hey, we are, you know, Ganon may be tied to us, but that doesn't mean anything. We'll stand against him. So, 
And then there was another book. I think it was written by... Uh, it was written by the head of the Gerudo's uh, mother, I think. I can't remember what her name was. But uh, they men it mentions Ganon's ties to the Gerudo as well. Which, of course, just means Ganondorf was a Gerudo. Or, or that was the form Ganon took at one point. Which I guess has become a favorite form of his since we've seen him as a Gerudo three times now. But um, anyway, that's all I got to say about that. It's just This will be an interesting character to see. You know, who is who is this being that clearly the Yiga have respect for? And, you know, this, this is a very, you know, the, the story of Breath of the Wild. You know, the story of Zelda in and of itself is sort of like this weird uh, enigma. You know, it's it's supposed to be sort of vague and mysterious because that's what a legend is. But Breath of the Wild carries a lot of that by itself. And we see now that was by design because we're getting three separate games to tell this story. So, that's an interesting thing that's happening. Something else that's more, that's a little interesting, but in a different way. If you play Fall Guys, you can now play a Sonic the Hedgehog, kind of. <laughs> that's a fun thing. Like, this is weird to me, like, uh... Like, what's up with Sonic being just, like, a costume for different games? Like, they just had announced that there were Sonic the Hedgehog costumes coming to uh, Ninjala, and now Fall Guys. Like, it's just, like, are we going to get a new Sonic game at some point? Like, everybody's waiting, I guess. But I just thought this was fun. I haven't gotten to play Fall Guys yet. And, you know, like, with games like this where there's just, like, simple little costumes, it's, uh, it's, I don't know if I would spend money on them, you know? If it was, like I said about the Ninjala thing, if it was to play as Sonic instead of, like, you're playing as a random, like, weird animal creature item thing that just has a costume for Sonic... You know, it might would be different. It's like the Miis. It's like, like, how excited are you to play as a Mi fighter? You know, like, would you rather play Zel like Smash Brothers as Link or as a Mi fighter that is dressed as Link? You know, I would, I would, I think I would go for Link unless you know. But then again, you can't do that with this kind of a game. I think it's just it's too limited. So this is the closest thing you're gonna get to make that work. But, you know, I, I'm not mad about it. I think they look, I think the Sonic uh, skin on this does look kind of funny, though. Because it doesn't have a mouth or anything. It's just like a, a big walking bean. They look kind of like the Among Us characters, just with arms. But yeah, I think that's a fun little thing to have. And moving on to the next thing, something I found out about just yesterday. There's apparently a mobile Disney game in the works called Mirrorverse. That I think it's not out yet. But, apparently it reimagines a lot of classic Disney characters, as you can see here. If you have Merida on the left, you got Sully in the middle, and Maleficent on the right. Uh, as fantasy warriors. And I don't know much about this game other than the name and some of the character designs. But these character designs are really good. Like, like I don't know how well you can see Merida in this picture. It's, she's kind of... <laughs> Big Sully there kind of covers up a lot of the uh, screen. But uh, Merida looks really good in this game. Like... Like, even, like, Maleficent looks like, like, uh, much less like just an evil dark queen and more like a, like a, a, a true fantasy sorceress or one you would expect of, like, out of, like, an RPG, you know, or a JRPG kind of game. And Merida just looks awesome. Like, I've always, like, 
Like, Merida, I think, is one of my favorite Disney princesses just because she's, you know, she is sort of unique. And, um, like, the scene in the movie where she shows up at the, the archery contest, you know, where the, the, um, the three sons of the, um, of the, um, other tribes have come over to ask, you know, for her to marry, to, to take her hand in marriage. And she shows up and says, I'm going to be shooting for my own hand. And everybody's like, what? And her mother, of course, is all mad. And she just casually just strolls along and gets three bullseyes, including shooting through the last guy's arrow, which was also a bullseye, and splits it right down the middle. Yeah, I always kind of, I always liked that about her, and that you know, she just she just feels like a very unique princess. But anyway, in this game, she looks really awesome, like just a straight warrior, like all the characters do. Belle from Beauty and the Beast is a like a some uh some kind of spellcaster looking character. Um, Rapunzel, they give her like a a souped up fancy uh, frying pan. But she looks pretty cool too. Buzz Lightyear. They may as well have made Buzz Lightyear into practically Iron Man. But uh, there were some others who wasn't. I remember seeing one for like Jack Sparrow. There's one for Oogie Boogie from you know Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, who else was there? Mulan. Jack Sparrow. Did I say Jack Sparrow? Uh, and I thought I saw one for, um, I may or may not have seen one from Maui, from Moana. But that may have been fake. I didn't, there, this, this seems to be a game that, you know, didn't get much attention. But it seems to have gotten a lot more attention since yesterday on Twitter. Because I got up this morning and saw somebody, I think, uh, tweet about it. But I... Yeah, everybody seems to like these character designs. Uh, I saw somebody say that they love the way the characters look in this game and this I- and the idea behind the game. But the game itself is not that good, and I could see why. It, you know, I can I can just imagine what a mobile game a mobile game like this would be like, and I get it. But if they were to like bring this to Steam to make like a PC version of it, I'd play it. I play it for the uh for 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 YouTube. I mean, I'll probably like it depending on if it's a free game or not and then, you know, uh you have to buy all the skins or whatever. Uh depending on that, um I might just uh get it for my phone anyway and just have it to do every now and then like I do on uh Among Us and Pokemon Go. But um Yeah, this is a this is an interesting idea. And I do like that they decided to give them new looks. Goofy, yeah, I think Goofy is in there too. Mickey and Minnie are in there. I I just just completely blanked out on their, uh, them being in there and they even have new looks. So, it's less new looks and more uh just new outfits. Um uh, Like, I don't know. Like, there's some subtle differences in them. But mostly it's just a change of outfit. But it they do look really cool. Which is the main point I was trying to get at. These are these are cool designs. And at the very least, you should check this out. Even if just to, even if it's not your thing and you don't really care about it. You know, I, I do like the character designs. So, it's an interesting idea, I think. And maybe one they should try to do something with. Like, it's weird that Disney doesn't do a lot of crossover nowadays, considering, you know, like how Kingdom Hearts is, you know, a super popular video game. Uh, people really liked, say, you know, like the House of Mouse. You know, that was a that was a popular show. And I still people see, uh, I still, uh, my, my English is all over the place today. Why can I not speak the language I've spoken my whole life? Um... Uh, I still see people see a 
I'm gonna quit talking. <laughs> is my um, yeah, what is wrong with me? I guess I just haven't been awake long enough. Anyway, uh, I still see people on Twitter. I finally got it out. I still see people on Twitter talk about House of Mouse every now and then, and wish it was on uh, Disney Plus, or wish it got some kind of release or something. But um. You know, like I've said this so many times, that crossovers will always appeal to people. And like I said, look at even just this one picture where you've got Merida, Maleficent, and Sully on the front. Like, of course, people are just going to say, hmm, that's interesting. You know, add to it that they look different than they usually do. And, of course, with like Spider-Verse and all this other crossover stuff that Disney's doing, you know... I, I, guess, I guess Disney's involved with the, the Spider-Verse. I guess it would have to be. But, uh, I don't know, man. Like, crossovers will work. Just, just I, I hope they'll put this on Steam. So, a, a, some kind of Steam version of the game, because I've seen that happen for a few other mobile games where they eventually bring them to Steam. Or just some sort of PC version of the game. I don't know. But anyway, we'll move on to the uh, next topic, uh, which is the last topic. Hopefully I can keep my words, you know, in order for this one. But I finally got to check out Super Mario Bros. 35, and it's really fun. Um, basically, what you do is you just play through the level, which you'll, you'll do if you've, if you've paid attention to this game at all, you'll know. But you, you run through a level, you kill enemies, and as you kill enemies, you get time. Like, you start off with just a little bit of time. And every enemy you kill, depending on how you kill them, you get uh, more time. Like, if you step on a Goomba, I think it's you get two seconds back. If you fireball them, you get one second back. I think if you have, like, a... Uh, I think if you have a star... While you're in, if you're while you're invincible, if you kill an enemy, I think you get like three seconds back. So, it may be five seconds. I'm not sure. Anyway, anyway, all you do is you go through the levels. You just loop through level after level. You know, usually you don't. You know, you'll get flung. I'm not sure how the level progression works because it just seems random to me. But uh, you clear a level. You move directly on to the next one. You do the same thing there. You know. Every 20 coins you get, or every 1-up mushroom you get, you get a free roulette item, which will either give you a mushroom, a fire flower, a pow block, which will kill all the enemies on the screen, or a star, which will give you invincibility. And you can keep building up and just save them and use them just whenever you want. So, it's a good idea, like... Uh, what I try to do, and you can start each round, like you can select, like as you accumulate coins from wins, you can spend them on either a mushroom, like starting a game out with a mushroom, a star, or a uh, a fire flower. So you can just immediately begin the match that way, but it costs coins. Anyway, uh, this is a really fun game. I still don't know why they would only make this a a limited time thing because it's just a lot of fun to play. Now I agree with what somebody said before about how like Tetris 99 you if you win that you feel more like you've actually accomplished something than you do playing this because you you know you're playing against more people. Well that's true. But I played this last night, and like these rounds can last a long time of you just cycling back through the same levels over and over again until you win. Like these games can last a long time. Uh, and when you get when when you get when you get hammered in this game with enemies, it can make things very stressful. So, so if you haven't like. If you haven't got a chance to play this, definitely uh, give it a try. Oh, oh what was I going to say? I think I've won like three times. Yeah. 
I, I think I've gotten three first place victories. I've been trying to, uh, like, I'm in the A rank. Like, it ranks you by how many coins you've won. I think it's, I think it is. And I, the last time I checked it, I was ranked A in the A class, which the top class is S. I've been trying to get into the top class. I just want to do that. I just want to get into it once. But um, I don't know how many people are playing, though, as a total. Like, I'm not concerned with, like, being the best, the single best player of this game ever. But I do want to try to get into S-Class because I've played Mario for so long. But, um, yeah, I I just would hate to see this game come March 2021 or come April 2021 uh, for this game to just disappear. I hope they don't. Uh, that free jump rope game that was on the Nintendo eShop thing, they announced it. See, I don't know. I'm not sure if I talked about this. I may have talked about this before. Uh, but that was only supposed to be up through September. And they announced it like a week before. Hey, this game is going to be pulled in a week. So if you haven't gotten it, go get it. And then apparently everybody ran to go get it and started playing it. And by the end of September, they said, due to an increased... Uh, amount of players for this game we've decided not to pull it from our shop thank you for playing i'm like okay and like that's what i that's what i'm hoping they'll do with this as well as like i kind of feel like that's what they're gonna do like it's just to it's just to create a sense that this is a limited time special event but it will come back like even if they just rename it but i don't know why they even rename it but, again, it's just, why go through the trouble of making a game and just pull it? I don't get it. But, anyway, go give this game a try if you haven't yet. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe winning against 34 players again, instead of 99 or 35, whatever, because you're one of the 35. Um, yeah, it's not quite as many people that you're fighting against. In the game, and therefore your victory doesn't feel quite so, you know, like it's not quite the same. You know, defeating more opponents or outlasting more opponents will always feel like the 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 more harder earned victory. But this is a fun game, and you do have to be careful when you're playing. You can't just rush through the levels. So you got to slow down. You got to, you know, take your time. Think about, you know, and and of course this is, you know, a a in uh, this is from the NES games. It, it plays essentially just like before. The controls are a little bit wonky. And so you got to be careful. I've jumped down holes who knows how many times. But uh but yeah. It's a good game. Go check it out. And that's all I got for you today. So thanks for watching. Uh, go check out some of my uh, stuff. I got coming up soon um, for Halloween. We're only about, what is it, two day, two weeks from Halloween? Uh, we're two weeks from Halloween. So I'm going to be doing uh, some videos for Resident Evil and the Addams Family uh, SNES game, the first one. And that will be my little Halloween treat for you guys is some uh, Resident Evil and Adam's Family. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, like and subscribe, all of that. And we'll see you later.